It's been more than half a year since we saw the first complete Starship prototype take off. Although that waiting time is still very short compared to many other rockets, it feels very long for most of us. The first reason is that we all admire this huge rocket, but there is another important reason, which is the fact that the S-24 and B-7's performance on that first flight probably still didn't satisfy our expectations. It can't be said then that SpaceX has built an interesting flight process for Starship. Unfortunately, we were not able to see all of those steps in the airport flight. The past few months have been the time when SpaceX has made important improvements and and upgrades. With those upgrades, we expect the next flight will take place in its entirety. So while we wait for the final approvals from government agencies, why don't we take a look again at what the Starship S25 and B9 will perform in its upcoming flight and see how the important changes of the past few months will affect this flight. All of this on today's episode of Alpha Tech. Three, two, one, and liftoff. That will probably be our most impressive and memorable moment in the next Starship's orbital test flight because that will be the moment when all our emotions explode with the sound of the powerful engine, which would lift the world's largest rocket into orbit. However, that is only a very small step of the entire upcoming flight because before and after that moment, Starship still has to go through many other important steps. Particularly in this flight, we will have many challenges compared to the previous flight after over a thousand changes that SpaceX has made to their monster. So let's start with this flight. Before Starship officially takes off, SpaceX will conduct the pull, verification, and fueling of the vehicle. These processes will start about two hours before liftoff time and last until T minus 20 minutes. During that time, SpaceX will fuel the booster first and then fuel the second stage Starship spacecraft. Fueling at two separate processes is considered Consider to avoid problems related to mass differences and help optimize propellant. Next, SpaceX will release pressure from the propellant tank. This is because when fueling into the tanks, the propellant will warm up, expand, and turn into gas, leading to increased pressure. Therefore, SpaceX will have to release them to reduce pressure on the propellant tank. This is a process otherwise known as venting. After that process, about 20 minutes before liftoff time, the engine will be cooled. This will help reduce the temperature difference between between the engine and propellant, avoiding damage to the engine, and avoid affecting propellant flow and combustion performance. Besides that, in the past few months, SpaceX has also had a few upgrades to the engine. The injectors and manifolds have been reinforced to help them withstand pressure and heat, preventing leaks as the engine releases energy. The new electric TVC system was installed and the igniters were also upgraded to increase reliability and avoid the engine not being able to activate or stop working like in the previous flight. About about three seconds before liftoff, the engines will be ignited. A few seconds before that, the water deluge system will have been started. This is a significant difference from the previous flight. The system will pump water from water tanks through pipe systems to steel plates, then sprayed through small holes like shower heads. Thanks to that, it'll deflect and disperse the fire, thereby reducing the heat and pressure caused by the 33 Raptor engines. And when the engines are activated, that is when the vehicle leaves the launch pad to fly up. At this time, we will witness the next difference. The amount of time between when the engine activates and when the vehicle leaves the launch mount will be reduced from 10 to 5 seconds. This will help limit the time the launch mount suffers huge heat and pressure from the engine. Along with the support of the steel plates and water deluge system, this upgrade will help avoid terrible damage to the launch mount and surrounding infrastructure, something that took place in the first flight. The vehicle will leave the launch mount and fly southeast. About 2 minutes and 39 seconds after lift off, it will enter an important step, the separation process. Previously, the inability to separate was the main reason why SpaceX intentionally destroyed the vehicle during the flight, but this time, it'll be different. Firstly, the booster's engines will cut off. This is when we will see the outstanding upgrade of the S25 and B9 pair in operation, the hot staging mechanism. The spacecraft's engines will be activated immediately while still sitting on the booster. With the hot staging update, the separation process will be simpler, the amount of heat and pressure generated by the spacecraft's engines will be directed outward through vents to avoid energy accumulation that could damage the engines and two stages. After that, the two stages will separate from each other to operate. But let's talk about the booster first. After separating from the Starship spacecraft, which will take place around 2 minutes and 53 seconds after liftoff, the booster will activate the central gimbal engines to adjust the booster's direction to a safe landing area in the Gulf of Mexico. About a minute later, those engines will also shut down and 
and then about 3 minutes later, specifically 6 minutes and 18 seconds after liftoff, the booster will be in the transonic state. About 10 seconds later, the engines will be activated again to reduce the booster's falling speed as it approaches the ocean's surface. Finally, about 6 minutes and 48 seconds after liftoff, the engines will shut down again and the booster will fall safely into the sea and end its mission. As for the upper or second stage, after separating from the booster, it'll continue to fly into orbit. At this time, all of its engines will be activated and operate for about 6 minutes. At T plus 8 minutes and 33 seconds, its engines will also shut down. Next, Starship would have entered the lowest orbit area in the atmosphere. It'll fly in this space for more than an hour with a distance of about 3 quarters of the Earth's circumference. Then, at an hour and 17 minutes after liftoff, it'll re-enter the atmosphere. At this time, the flaps will play the role of controlling the Starship to perform a belly flop maneuver to direct the heat shield tiles downward to withstand the heat caused by friction with the atmosphere. About 11 minutes later, it'll also enter a transonic state like the booster, and after two minutes, it will splash down into the sea 100 kilometers northwest of Kauai, an island in the Hawaiian archipelago in the Pacific Ocean. The mission will officially end after an hour and 30 minutes. Those are all the important steps we need to notice about Starship in the upcoming flight. Right now, though, we're all probably just hoping for two things to happen. Firstly, these processes will go smoothly and successfully finish. But before all of that can actually go down, we have another hope, which is that all obstacles preventing the upcoming flight from taking place will be resolved soon. And the obstacle that I mention is the Fish and Wildlife Service Agency. Unlike previous flights, when SpaceX mainly had to deal with the FAA, this time around, they also had another barrier, the Fish and Wildlife Services. This time, the FAA worked significantly faster than before. After several months of work on September 8th, they completed the mishap investigation and assessment related to the first orbital test flight. Even though it's not an official flight license, it's still a good sign that one of the biggest challenges has been overcome. However, the FWS is continuing to conduct its separate surveys. The initial estimated time is 35 to 130 days. However, after the urging from many other agencies, they recently accelerated their work procedures. While the agency is conducting the final procedures, we have also received quite a few leaks about the next flight's launch date. First, many sources said the flight would likely launch on November 13th. Most recently, according to an updated notice to Mariners, or NOTMAR, the Starship launch is now officially no earlier than November 15th. We still need to wait for more updates to know the accurate official launch date. Here's hoping that we don't have to wait too long for Starship to conduct its next orbital test flight. Perhaps many of us will be extremely excited to witness the magical journey of the Starship, but let's try to suppress our emotions. When the final seconds count down, you will be able to explode with all these emotions along with SpaceX and the Starship. I believe it'll be a memory that you and I will never forget in our lifetime. And that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in and we hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please also let us know what you thought about it in the comment section down below because your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. So for that, once again, we thank you so much and we hope to see you again next time.